business meeting. Chair Susanna Mazel Hubs could not be here tonight, so as Vice Chair, I'm stepping in. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Can I have, uh, I'm sorry, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion for item two? I move we approve the regular business meeting minutes from Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. Second. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Our student representatives are not here tonight. They are not here. I received <laughs> I, re I received an email today from um, Piper and Julia, and they have a cross practice tonight, so they're very busy. They couldn't make the minute uh, the meeting, um, but they did write a little something. So okay. I thought I, I told them I'd read it. Um, so they just wanted to let. Uh, to me and the rest of the board members know that everything at school is running smoothly. <laughs> uh, this past Monday, all juniors took the statewide science test and the feedback that they received from most students was very positive. The juniors will also be taking the SAT on Tuesday and thanks to the help of Mr. Wagner and Mr. Shedd, most students are feeling confident about the upcoming test. Lastly, school sports are starting to kick into gear and most seasons will begin after break. So they send their apologies for not being here. Oh. Well, I hope they have a good lacrosse practice. Mm -hmm. so it's getting doing. nice out there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, are there any comments from the public on the agenda, on any of the agenda items? All right, seeing none. Uh, we have a few presentations. We'll start with um, the robotics program, the Boys Class B Alpine State Championship. We're gonna start with that and so uh, I'd like to ask Evan Thayer, the coach of the robotics, to come on up and present the awards to his members of his team. Thank you very much. And this is for you. Thank you. Taking a couple minutes for this, I'd like to have the uh, team come up here as well. Realizing you have a very busy evening generally, but we would like to take just a few minutes to explain a little bit about what we did this, uh, this year. And I think Carter, we were gonna start with you. Uh, so we're from the high school as you uh, know. And so this year we've had a very exciting season in VEX Robotics. It's been very successful for both teams. Um, so two of us out of our five high school teams have qualified for Worlds. So my team, 56J and uh, 56G. And we thought it'd be pretty cool to share with you like what our robots do and how we qualified. Uh, and it doesn't make sense unless we explain it, so. Um, so I'm gonna have Evan come and explain how some of the game works. Uh, hi, I'm Evan, and so for this year's game, we were tasked with, we had these uh, flags, and there are, oh, yeah, the correct side. Um, and there are three uh, columns of three, so nine total, and the idea is we have these balls, and we would hit the flags to turn them to our color, two alliances, red and blue, 
And so in order to accomplish that, we had a system that would suck the balls up off the ground and shoot them out of a high spinning wheel. It spins at 3,000 RPM, and it has been super successful. Um, yeah, I will pass it over to Matthew Zimmerman to talk about the next part of the game. Hi, I'm Matthew, and another large part of this year's game is a stacking element where you would grab one of these caps with something a lift, where we would drive out to poles to earn points by stacking them up onto poles. document them and that's what I do and yeah we document everything we do and notebooks and it's um and we have to write down the all the steps of building a robot this year we actually um, we actually built two robots so we had to put two robot designs in there and we had to put we put on all our stats and all of the all of the things that go well and go wrong, and yeah, just so um, we can like look back and like learn from our mistakes and everything. Pass it off to Sarah. So the first 15 seconds of each match is what's known as the autonomous period, and where, whereas most of the match is driver control, this period has to have uh, code pre-downloaded uh, to the robot to do certain actions, and winning the autonomous period can be uh, game-changing for the outcome of the match, as you get four points for um, winning it. And uh, the coding is done in Robot C, or C++ Pro, depending on which C system you use. Um, and that's... Oh, another crucial part of the design process because you have to make it so that the robot drives on different buttons depending on how you want to drive it. So the teams getting recognized here tonight are 56J and that is Lauren Abrahamson who is not here and Ethan Coronite who is not here and Carmen Erickson. Evan and and Evan Evan Gephardt. Carter Miriam. And our team fifty six G is Carter Abrahamson. Sarah Hagen, Eva Morris, Matthew Zimmerman. Thank you for having us out tonight. And again, thank you for the demonstration because yes, I would have had no clue what those little robots. Robot and good were luck doing. at the competition. Know, good luck yeah, in the world. And good luck in the world. Um, next up, we have um, Jeff Davis here to present for the Class Boy B Alpine State Champion. Congratulations. I hope we get a demonstration. Just kidding. <laughs> Thanks for having us tonight. Uh, we have several representatives, not the whole team can make it, um, but very proud of these boys this season. We won last year as well, so we uh, were defending state champions. Um, didn't 
lose a meet all year and um, skied very well at states to, to win another one. Um, I'd also like to say I was proud of the team. Um, due to success at states, several of our teammates um, made an all-star meet and from that, a team from Maine was picked to represent the state of Maine in an eastern uh, regional meet um, that represented, or that uh, included uh, states from Wisconsin east, or Midwest to east. And uh, this year we sent six skiers to that. So six of our um, racers represented Maine. Uh, one girl, Dana Schwartz, who's not here, but Cody Labonte, Tiernan Lathrop, Devin Lathrop, Killian Lathrop and Gannon Stewart, who's not here tonight. So, very successful uh, season. Um, tonight we have Killian Lathrop. There you go. Uh, Duncan Geike. Devin Lathrop. Devin Lathrop. Tiernan Lathrop. Nicholas Clifford. Sorry, Nicholas Martin. And Cody Labonte. Thank you much for thank you very much for having us tonight. <laughs> do you want do you want a photo? Take a, yeah. Yeah. Take a photo. Okay. Do a photo. Oh, yeah. Let's have a better little so you don't block us. So oh, maybe Kathy, nice. do you have a phone? Does somebody have a phone? So you guys have to squat so that we can be seen. There we go. You got strong. Ready? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nasser. I thought they'd left. So yeah, I haven't right, seen them. Right. Um, we forgot. <laughs> bring your robots too. Get on down. Yeah, bring the robots bring in. Bring the robots. Come bring on. the robots. That's the reason I'm taking the one to take the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have administrative reports, starting with the principals. Shall we start with, go ahead, <laughs> Mr. Mandarini's. It's most fun when we let you all kind of figure out who has to go. Yes, I'm getting used to being going first. <laughs> Good evening. I would like to start by once again thanking the board and Superintendent Wolfram for a very smooth and transparent and productive budget process this year. So your support has been greatly appreciated. So thank you for that. Um, a few highlights. I wanted just to let you know that we've started the student place class placement process for the 2019-2020 school year already. It's quite a lengthy process and we've started with um, receiving information from parents 
And I, we're very fortunate at Pond Cove to have such a large amount of parent involvement. I receive many, so hundreds of uh, forms completed by parents with information, uh, helpful information on just learning styles and likes and dislikes and just important things about students to consider as we're creating balanced classrooms. And so uh, the next step is that teachers will start working on this. And I presented this last year, but just kind of for review, you know, our goal is to always create balanced classrooms to create optimal learning environments for students. Some of the variables, uh, we look at gender balance, uh, mix of academic abilities, uh, making sure there's a variety of abilities, but also that uh, students have, have like peers to work closely with in the, in the classrooms. Uh, we look at learning styles, peer relationships, uh, of course class size, trying to keep that quite even, um, and also any special needs of students. We take all that into account. It takes a few months for us to do this. It's a process we take very seriously. So we've started that. And so we're currently, we're working on, of course, creating classrooms for grades one through five students right now. And we create classrooms for kindergarten in the summer when we are quite certain how many students we will have and how many classrooms we will have. And so on that note, uh, we are currently, we're still holding at about 85 kindergarten registrations. So it hasn't moved for a few weeks. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, um, last year, of course this year we have large kindergarten classrooms. Last year at this time we had 100 students registered. The year before that at this time we had 70. So we're higher than that but lower than, so we'll see what that means. I'm thinking it means that we're going to end up with 100 to 105. I think that's where we're going to be, but we'll see. It's, um, they're still coming in. Uh, tomorrow is our last day for grades three and four students to test on the Empower Me state testing. And um, it's taken over the course of six days. Grade three and four students have taken various assessments. I've been just really impressed with how our students have approached the assessments. Uh, I think our staff do a great job of, of balancing um, the message to students that the tests are important, but not stressing the students about it. So I think everything we do at school is important, so students are used to being geared up for important tasks. Because I've just been impressed with the proctoring done by the teachers and the students, their, their performance. So we're, we're happy to have done that and happy it's almost over. Uh, a few, so other than April vacation, May, April is pretty quiet. Um, some things that are coming up before we know it in May, um, I just want to mention uh, Teacher Appreciation Week is, is a real special week for us at Pond Cove, and that's May 5th through the 11th. We have something really special planned for teachers for that week, which I, I don't know, I don't know if everybody knows about it yet, so I'm not going to tell. Um, May 7th, our grade two spring musical evening performance. And May 9th, our grade one musical evening performance. Those are always really fun. The, the cafetoria is completely packed. All the parents show up. And f finally, one special um, day at Pond Cove. May 8th is National Walk or Bike to School Day. And last year we had over 200 bicycles parked out in front of the entryway, and it's quite a sight to see, so we're looking forward to that. And that's all I have tonight. Thank, thank okay. you so much. Thank you. So sometimes I get here and there's not a lot going on. There's a lot going on um, right now at the middle school. So um, for staff as well as students, and a couple of um, staff highlights that have kind of gone on, our um, great Susan Dana, who kind of does a lot under the radar and doesn't, and she kind of likes it that way. Uh, so she's on here, I can talk about her. Uh, she just was asked to present at the, um, Global UN, which to, which is really talking about getting our kids some experiences outside of Cape and outside of our school without necessarily having to go outside of our school. So Skyping and you know making sister classrooms in other in other places. So uh, she just presented it in Brunswick as kind of uh, one of several speakers, and then they 
she so impresses them, they've asked her to go and present at a bigger conference. And so moving forward, we're gonna try to support that and get on board with her with that. I think, I think there's a lot of meat on that bone that we can kind of, kind of take advantage of. So, and she's a great leader for that. Uh, tomorrow night at this time, I'll be sitting in the Cinderella play. So uh, that's, been the, that's been going on for a while, it's amazing. I heard somebody, I was there last night for another thing, which was the um, executive functioning parent night that was put on by one of our fifth grade teachers, Kristen Arbor and, and Sarah Hansen, our social worker. And I went, there was 50 parents in the library for that. When I was walking by, they're still making sets <laughs> on our stage. It's, you know, parents are in there with kids going at it. So uh, it's amazing really to see how much is happening there. Chwanky meeting is going on right now, I think. And Chwanky was there all day. That was the uh, that was really an extension of last year's first approach that Steve kind of helped sponsor, and it's just we found it to be so helpful. Uh, and today, the, this I was pretty impressed. Our staff came up with the idea of having some seventh graders that experienced it last year have them form a panel, and kids were there to ask them questions. Uh, the Chihuahua people that were there said, "Oh my goodness, this should happen everywhere. This is great." Uh, so, so that was that was really well done. Uh, and then, kind of lastly, the major push for, for the community book read of Finding Perfect has been a huge success. And it's really a largely because of Jill's, Jill Young, our school nurse's motor to push and, and push through things. Um, but it's also could not happen if our staff was not flexible. This was something that was supposed to happen around December, January. There's kind of a quiet time there where, where it would have been perfect. Um, perfect. And so then they had, uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't get all of our books published in time, and it was a pretty frustrating situation. So we had to wait because then the MEA, the test, state testing was happening. Uh, so we kind of were under the gun to make it happen, and the teachers are just awesome. So we were able to do one hour delay. It's going to end up being three weeks by the time we're done. But uh, you walk around the the middle school if you're if you're around tomorrow or sometime, it's amazing. You walk in there and it's quiet. Like the whole first hour of school is quiet. You can hear a pin drop. Um, when students come in late, they are not allowed to go to their classroom. We have some alternative spaces for them because I don't want to interrupt what's going on in the rooms. Um, so that has been, I think, a really eye-opening and, and positive experience. It's getting national attention. The author is coming on the 22nd uh, at the end by the sea, and it's just nice. I've had students come up to me that I never really talked to and say, this has been awesome. So. I think it's pretty powerful that your whole school and community can get behind that. Uh, and it's kind of putting us out there as a leader, which I think we want to, we want to do that. Take risks and support kids. So I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And then Jeff Shad from the high school. Thank you. So um, I want I have two topics, and one is I wanted to um, let the board know that um, probably most of you appreciate that secretaries in schools really run the building. Um, they are much more important than people like me, um, and they are the unsung heroes that make schools sing. Um, so we just had one of our unsung heroes who's been at the school for the last 10 to 12 years, I'm not sure exactly how many, Noni Adams, um, leave our guidance department. Um, she needed a, a position which would allow her to work throughout the summer. Um, she left on wonderful terms. We are so sad to see her go, happy for the opportunity that she has. Um, but her position in the guidance office does a number of things behind the scenes that only only a, a handful of people really appreciate. It's all the stuff working with PowerSchool behind the scenes so that when we go to create a master schedule, it works. Um, it's changing kids' schedules, working with the guidance counselors to make sure they're getting what they need. This time of year, it's coordinating lots and lots and lots and lots of testing as a team member in the guidance department. And there's many other things, but probably the most important thing is that um, Noni, as well as our other secretary who remains, Marie Cross, they are the first faces of the guidance department when kids come into the guidance department. So they um, work hard to create a warm and welcoming atmosphere. Uh, we're sad that we've left, no that Noni has left us now. We wish her all the best. I didn't want her to go without sort of a public acknowledgement for the work that she's done over many years. 
The other topic that I wanted to mention is completely different, and that is our trend in terms of enrollment and paths. I think I've mentioned this in general a little bit um, at a previous meeting, but I wanted to give you a few more specifics. So I would say for the five years or so before 2017 school year, typically we had Cape Elizabeth High School sent five to seven students to pass which is the Portland's, Portland Arts and Technology High School, where a number of our students spend half their days, usually their afternoons, and the other half of their days is taking classes in the high school. So the last couple of years, we've made a major push working with PASS to try to increase that number so that more students would take advantage of that opportunity. Um, and I'm pleased to report that last year, we went from five to 12. This year we went from 12 to 17, which is where we are now. Next year, based on where the numbers are right now, I think we'll be at somewhere at least 20, maybe in the low 20s somewhere. So it's been a huge increase um, in terms of the number of students who are taking advantage of the many wonderful offerings that PATHS has. And I wanted to mention a few people in particular um, who've worked really hard to make this progress possible. Um, and two of the people are our school counselors, Eamon Keenan and Brandy LaPointe, um, have cooperated with PAS to coordinate folks from PAS coming in to talk to all of our sophomores every year for the past three years um, to try to publicize more about what there is to offer. Um, and then to support students to help them plan how they can get to graduation while taking PAS because there are some sacrifices with that. Typically kids take care of a lot of their requirements in the freshman and sophomore year and junior and senior year is typically when kids go to paths. And then the other person I wanted to give a specific shout out to is Nate Carpenter, the assistant principal, um, who has become sort of a Hyde Piper of kids going to visit paths. Um, so there are official visit to paths that Randy LaPointe and Eamon Keenan arrange. Nate has gotten into the habit of doing pre-visits, very personal pre-visits, taking individual kids to paths to, with, in his car, usually stopping at Dunkin' Donuts on the way, uh, having all kinds of wonderful conversations. He's done that. He's, He's already done that once this week, uh, Monday or Tuesday. I know he's taking another student on Friday as well. It's a great investment of time, um, and I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made in getting kids to take advantage of that great, great opportunity. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. Hello. Um, in the special education world, I just wanted to share that the special education staff has been working diligently on um, making corrections that were found in the preliminary findings of, from the DOE with regard to the special education audit that was done last month. Um, I attended a meeting with the regional special education directors as part of the Sebago Alliance last Friday. The group has contracted with the previous state director of special education from DOE to advise them on preparing for the eventual assumption of the three and four year old preschoolers. Um, the state also recently released updated special education numbers with regard to the percentage of students identified as needing special education services five through 20. And the state average at this moment in time is 18.23. That has been slowly increasing from 2013 when it was at 15.63. Cape Elizabeth is currently at just under 10%. Um, currently we're servicing 154 students in special ed, 61 at Pond Cove, 45 at the middle school and 48 at the high school. We have 14 students in referral and two students that are outplaced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 
I'm going to talk to you briefly about assessment. Um, as Jason mentioned, we are wrapping up MEA testing. This is for students in grades three through eight. They have experienced seven different testing sessions, reading, writing and language, math, and an essay. Um, this is, as you know, a federal and state mandate. The data is used primarily for school accountability. We don't get the results until fall, so it's not terribly useful for us on an individual student basis, um, but take them we must. Uh, the uh, 11th graders will be taking the SAT next Tuesday. They have already taken the science augmentation. They did that on Monday. And Ponco, well, no. Uh, the 5th and 8th graders will be taking the MEA science exam um, sometime after the April break. I'm not sure whether, I'm looking at Jason and Troy, whether, have you chosen the exact date yet? Do you know? No, 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 for MEA, for MEA science. Yeah. It's coming. Early May. Early May, okay. Um, we have a two week window during which we can offer it, so I'm not, I'm just not sure yet what the precise schedule is. Um, Okay, then I, w I wanted, secondly, to talk to you about uh, the NWEA, which is actually a much more useful assessment for us. Um, and you know already a fair amount about it, but we have updated the reporting that we're gonna be providing to parents. Those of you with children at Pond Cove have already had the experience of seeing a printed copy of the student progress report. Um, we are now going to be uploading this report um, to the parent portal twice a year. Um, and the interface will be similar to the interface you experience when you look at the individual school report that's provided for the MEA. So you'll click on NWA um, after the fall testing has been completed and you'll be able to see fall to fall data. Um, and in the spring, we'll upload following the completion of the spring testing and the growth period there will be fall to spring. So you'll get to see how your child is growing from year to year and also within an academic year. And um, I just think this is gonna be much much more user friendly for parents because as well as getting the data, and I have a sample for you here of what that is going to look like. Um, there's a, a key on the back as you'll see and so I think I think both um, principals felt, uh, found that they were getting a lot of calls from parents asking what, <clears throat> what, do, these, what do these scores mean? Um, and so we're hoping that um, by, by printing out this, or by uploading the student progress report to the portal with this extensive key, um, that many of those questions will be answered. But of course, if you have any questions, you, I'm looking at all of you because I'm talking to you, but this is true for all of the parents. If you have any questions, um, feel free to contact the teacher. Um, we've had two trainings at Pong Cove and a couple of trainings at the middle school as well for teachers on um, how to um, access and interpret the various reports. And I just think people, the teachers in general, are feeling much more confident um, about their ability to talk, talk to parents about the scores. So I'll pass out the report and, um, and then I'm gonna go and sit down. But if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Thank you. So Kathy, this is just for our reference. You're oh yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. You're all set then. Yeah, I is am, that... unless you. Yeah, no, I wasn't going to go through it with you okay. because I do. Really, you're the guinea pigs, right? Like you should. I'm, I'm making the case that you ought to be able to read the back and understand everything on the report. So if you can't, you tell me later. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. And then we have Superintendent Wolfram. So while uh, Catherine Mesmer has been out, we have been, of course, tracking the financials and we're about three quarters of the way through the school year and we're right on target as far as the budget goes. So I'm feeling, feeling good about that and it's been great having her help us with all of the um, FY20 budget um, materials. So I'm very thankful that he's here with us. So I'd like to thank all those who participated in the, the future search on March 15th and 16th. I had many positive comments as I've been out in the community and met community members. And several, I've heard from several of the community members who have asked to remain involved in the process. So um, during the next step, we will certainly contact those people 
to um, continue their involvement. The next step will be to analyze the data and then to craft an executive summary that features the themes and highlights of the future search. As we complete the budget development process, we will begin working on the executive summary. Following the publication of the exec executive summary, we will identify goals that emerge and then create a strategic plan with specific steps that will help us reach our goals. You have the latest enrollment um, in your packet showing that we've increased our enrollment by two students since last month. And as um, Jason said, the latest kindergarten enrollment stands at uh, 85 students next year's kindergarten. And we're watching that closely. The Greater Maine Sebago Alliance, which is our regionalization center, is planning a year-long course in building leadership within districts. And that training will begin in the summer and extend throughout the year and possibly on into the next several years, but right now we're just looking at one year. Each district in the Alliance has seven seats. Uh, so teacher leaders and future leaders within Cape Elizabeth are in process of applying for the seats and we really have had a great response um, for this learning opportunity. So uh, we have all seven seats filled. We have a wait list. Yeah, so that's, wow. that's really encouraging when you look at leadership in our district. So. Yeah. Um, the district emergency management team is in the process of developing parent-student reunification procedures for emergency situations. Plans will be ready to share with staff at the beginning of the next school year, and we are planning a drill without students that will be held in the fall to practice those procedures. So that's really, um, should there be an emergency um, and parents come to pick up their students, it's the, it's the procedures for reuniting the parents with the students, which um, can get a little chaotic in emergency situations. So we are going to start practicing those um, without students at first. The Teacher Evaluation Committee has been meeting twice a month to revise those procedures, so we're in the process of developing training videos. Uh, the members of the committees have um, been developing those videos that will be shared, or really it's PowerPoint, so that will be shared with teachers and published on the district website. Teachers will then be able to visit those um, PowerPoints as a review of the system. So that's pretty exciting. So we've been starting that process. And at our last meeting, we shared the work that had been done, and it's good work. We just received word that the Cape Elizabeth School Department um, has been honored with the best communities for education designation from the um, NAMM Foundation. Music education. Mu sorry, music education, did I skip that? <laughs> music education for its out outstanding commitment to music education. The Cape Elizabeth School D Department joins 623 districts across the country in receiving this prestigious award in 2019. The Best Communities Music Education designation is awarded to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement and efforts to provide music access and education to all students. Um, did go to the um, fifth and sixth grade concert the other night and it was absolutely amazing to see all those students and we had many who were out with the flu but um, it was it was a packed house and it was a, it was just amazing what those teachers have um, done with the students in, in such a short amount of time. So it's, it was very exciting. Finally, we, we did receive word that our health insurance increase is 6.78% uh, above last year. We started out by using, as you remember, a 10% increase placeholder in the original request budget, uh, FY20 budget. And then last week, we received notification that the highest increase would be 7%, so we did lower. Um, 3% and that gave us a savings of $101,485. Um, and I know Elizabeth is going to talk about this more, but after much discussion, the board agreed to use the savings to decrease the expenditure budget to 5.9% increase over last year. And they placed the remaining $53,811 in the contingency fund. So this would reduce the impact on taxpayers to a 4.94% increase over last year. That's great. Thank you very much. So moving on to new business, budget updates. Shall I turn to you? Um, I think, well, 
There aren't any further budget updates beyond um, the news that Donna just shared that we um, received our actual number for our health insurance increase and um, we were very close to that 7%. Uh, so um, we have decided not to really change the um, extended expenditure budget at all and leave it at 7% because uh, there's a, that would just allow for a very, very small amount of wiggle room. I'm, I'm going to say uh, maybe around $7,000, Donna. Yes. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a small amount of money. But um, in the event that um, somebody in the school department goes from perhaps a single plan to a family plan or, you know, different changes like that, that allows us to absorb that without, you know, dipping into our contingency fund. So that's where we're at right now for budget update. Okay. So item 7B, do I have a motion? I move that the 2019-2020 school budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth be approved in the total amount of $26,890,420. Uh, do I have a second? I second that. Any discussion? Kimberly? Is this? Uh huh. This is time. This is time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, all right. I, um, I have felt very positive and satisfied about the uh, budget process this year, and much of that. Um, is because of the hard work of so many of you. I want to start by thanking our residents for all the support, financial and otherwise, of our schools. We're so fortunate to be in such a caring and engaged community and our excellent schools reflect that. Um, big thank you to Dr. Wolfram and our administrators um, for spending so many hours working on the budget. I appreciate the time and energy you put in and the cooperative, collaborative approach that was taken in crafting this budget. Dr. Wolfram, your approach to the budget process was helpful. You guided us well, and your regular updates to the community have been really appreciated. Thank you for that. Um, I would also like to thank our town manager and counselors for all the effort they have put into the budget process throughout the year. There has been ongoing meetings and communication with the town manager and the counselors. On both sides, we have strived to make improvements, which has felt very positive and healthy for the town as a whole. I fully support this budget. I particularly appreciate the extra time and effort that was put in to ensure that we have a budget that includes funding for a needs assessment of our facilities and is sensitive to the tax impact on our residents. I'm proud of the work we have all done to put together this budget that holds students firmly in the center and sets a priority for the future of our facilities. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I would reiterate everything that Kimberly said. I think the um, the process this year was so dramatically different and so refreshingly positive. I think we set an example for what all budget processes should look like, and I, I think Donna you had a great deal to do with that. Um, and I, but also so many other people, as you mentioned, town councilors. Jamie Garvin coming to all of our meetings, the people who are at the other meetings giving us input um, throughout the process. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight that I really enjoyed seeing was the co what appeared to be, from our perspective, a, a lot of cooperation among the schools, so between the schools, that not just, you know, it wasn't just about the Ponco budget or the middle school budget, it was about the district budget. I think that's so important um, because with the decisions we make for kindergartners today, will impact what we have to, you know, the budget we need to discuss for them in 10 years when they're entering high school. And, and um, you know, so it's not, um, every decision we make has a long-term impact. And I think that's, that's why it's really important for the schools to work together and, and see this as a, a district-wide budget. Um, I appreciated very much the thoroughness of the details that were included, um, the information that was shared with us. I felt very um, up to speed all the time. I appreciated the transparency and the responsiveness of the district uh, administrators. So the question and answer process was really helpful, <laughs> I thought. That was, um, you know, to have them in, in writing. I didn't, at first I was like, oh, this is going to be kind of stilted, but it really, I felt it, it, it helped us to sort of, everyone knew the questions ahead of time, we then got to review them, and it sort of gave us a, a better opportunity to digest the information. Um, 
So at any rate, I thought it was, um, Jason said, smooth and transparent. I couldn't agree more. Everything about it was, was positive, and I, of course, I support the budget. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I echo what was already been really well said, um, fully in support of the budget. And it was really a learning experience for me, first year on the board. And I really loved, like you were saying, the, the collaborative effort of everybody involved. And I thought it was also really nice how we started every meeting with our goals. And it was really nice, because at certain times I thought, well, could we do this differently, or could we do that differently? When you have those goals in mind, right off the bat, it's a really great approach to make sure that everything is aligned. So I appreciated that and all the hard work that everybody did in this budget was great. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Uh, pause. <laughs> It's, it's tough to echo everybody because uh, everyone has done a great job, but I do want to thank Elizabeth too because uh, she is the uh, uh, head of the committee of chair for the, for, for the budget. And I, I, when, when John was here last year, I thought it would be very tough to cover him. Uh, he did a great job, but Elizabeth just did as well. This is a good job as, as we have. Uh, we appreciate uh, for, like Hope said, for submitting the questions. So, because when you submit the questions, you really think about it, you do look at the numbers, and you compose your question in a way that will be answered and be meaningful. So, it was beneficial to those who answered it, but it was also beneficial for us as well, and uh, uh, makes you turn pages. Where here you just ask back and forth, back and forth, a lot of time is wasted. So definitely we want to continue with our practice. And, uh, and Donna, I've been, I've been enjoying reading your email that's coming to the public, to parents as well, about describing the budgets and what the processes are, what stage we're at. I mean, those are excellent, and this is where those are basically the footnotes <laughs> to everything that you see in this big book. So all around, uh, thanks for everyone for their hard work, and uh, I'm definitely in favor of this budget, and uh, I enjoyed you know, when, when the budget season, things are really tough and people get really emotional. And so I really, really enjoy the teachers' testimonies and how they were backing their one another. And their, and as a community, uh, they really care about one another. It was not about just the numbers you know, and the stories they have shared and why individual students matter and why their teaching matter. So, and they were basically highlighting each other's skills. Uh, uh, skills and positive impact. So I, I, that was the best thing that I got of the budget. Right. Um, Susanna mazel Hubs was not able to be here today, but she did want me to share this with everyone. I'm sorry that I'm not here tonight to speak in person, but as always, the building of a successful school budget is a collaborative endeavor which leans on many people. To that end, I want to give a special thanks to everyone involved in creating a budget that is fiscally sound, academically strong, and committed to forward thinking. This year, we have had a ver the very good fortune of having the town manager and town council working alongside us since the fall in the spirit of creating a communicative and trusting relationship. The input and exchange of ideas has definitely made our town more cohesive and our schools better off. Under the steadfast leadership of our new superintendent, Donna Wolfram, I want to thank all the administrators for the enormous number of hours spent building and refining this budget, as well as the insight required of them to know when to compromise and when to hold firm. I do not want to forget to thank our business manager, Catherine Mesmer, our temporary business manager, Herb Hopkins, and all the support staff for their crucial contributions. We couldn't do it without you. I want to thank my fellow school board members for the time and attention devoted to this process. I have no doubt that you all have your hearts and minds working in unison for the benefit of all our students. Thank you, Elizabeth Seifries for guiding us through this season with clarity and continuity. Lastly, thank you to all our community members who have remained engaged and donated their time along the way. In particular, the Needs Assessment Committee members deserve a special show of gratitude for researching and illuminating the need to make a much more proactive stance in securing, improving, and revitalizing one of the greatest assets of our town. 
I strongly support this budget. For the first time in a long time, I feel excited and satisfied with what we are able to include. It's amazing what a district can do with a little bit of positive reinforcement. Together, we all have risen to the challenge and have delivered a budget that behooves a sensitivity to taxpayers and yet remains befitting of all children. I'm truly looking forward to what the future holds for Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, so that was from Susanna. And I too would like to echo what everybody has said, a great thank you to, uh, from Donna to the administrators to um, both uh, Catherine and Herb and um, everybody involved in, in making this process, the town council, um, everybody involved in making this process, um, the school board members as well and Elizabeth. Uh, a, I feel a very successful process where there was listening, there was respect, um, and there was compromise from what I heard. And there was seeing the highest, um, how do I say this, trying to um, look for the best possible outcome and not just the best personal outcome, but for all involved. I think that was wonderful. I feel very hopeful with this budget. Um, it feels like the first one since I've been on the board where we're starting to gain ground again and move in a more forward direction. I feel like we've been treading water and sinking a little bit and I feel like we can make a little progress with this. So I'm very excited and um, I think it's gonna be a great year with it and I fully endorse this budget. So it's hard to go last because everybody's already used all the good words. <laughs> but I, I too, I wanted to start out with um, that I just feel so thankful. I'm thankful for our superintendent and for each and every one of our department heads and administrators. How uh, I, I understand that, that people come together when um, students are still new in the building and we're barely getting going with the current school year and, and this team comes together to start planning for next year, which is it's kind of crazy and gargantuan, but that's how it works. And so um, thank you for, for the long game. Thank you for coming together as a real team and supporting each other and, and really owning that every student in the district is your student. And it's not just doing things for my building or my department. Um, we really felt a sense of kind of, you know, the Cape Elizabeth team and that was wonderful to hear. Um, I am super thankful to our passionate and engaged teachers who came out in support of their students the parents that came out and, and showed their engagement in this process. And it's really exciting to, to see people show up to these budget meetings and show that they're paying attention and show that they care. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I'm going to particularly thank Wynn Phillips who came to every single meeting and most times had something to say. It's, it's wonderful, it, it, and I know we joked about it at the budget meeting a little bit. I got a little too silly, but I really appreciate your efforts on behalf of uh, the teachers of the district. Um, I'm thankful for all the participation this year. I echo um, Heather's sentiments. I wrote, I am so hopeful and excited about this budget and what we are able to do. It doesn't take much to, to get us just a little excited after three years of, of you know, just getting cut and saying, okay, how do, we, how do we not backslide? How do we not lose? We are able finally with, with just a little, a little gain from state aid and some creative thinking and work together to make some positive gains. To, to give some extra, not extra, but appropriate planning time to teachers at Pond Cove and to give different supports and help the students and help the teachers in what we wished we could do and now we are able to do and it feels wonderful. Every year I supported the budget because it was the budget, the best that we could do and this year I'm happy to support the budget. I'm proud of the work we did, I'm proud of the process that we did and um, so that's the end for me. I support the budget. I feel like it was a good process. Fantastic. <clears throat> so shall we vote? All in favor? Excellent. Okay. 
Okay, moving on to item. At this time, time, there's an additional time. motion yeah. that we, oh, there is there is related. Okay, which is legal language that Herb said we have to say. Okay, so it's 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 Herb's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's the attorney's fault. It's the attorney's fault. <laughs> Herb's just the messenger. <laughs> um, so it's it's a long one, and I'm the one with the paper, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Just, All please. right. So I move that the additional local funds article for the 2019-2020 school budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth be approved for the purpose of raising $8,416,956. In additional local funds for the school budget, which exceeds the state's essential programs and services allocation model by $8,416,956, that the statement of reasons for exceeding that model be approved as set forth below, and that the superintendent be authorized to prepare and deliver that article to the council for approval. The statement reads, school board's statement of reasons for exceeding essential programs and services allocation model. The state's funding model does not support all of the costs for K-12 education. It includes only those costs considered essential by the state's essential programs and services model. Okay, can I have a second? Second that. Thank you, and then discussion. Would somebody like to elaborate on or that? Or just exp and explain. explain why we have to. And why we have to do that. Donna, would you like to explain? Um, it, it is because um, <coughs> the state law requires us to um, explain why we are going above um, or below um, some, the EPS formula. So it just gives us permission to add, to go to the, um, go to the town and the, the um, citizens and ask for money in above, uh, in excess of what we get from our state subsidy. Great. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. I'm not talking anymore tonight. <laughs> you might. Uh, okay. Uh, item 7C, please. Can I have a motion? I move that we approve the student education trip for the Cape Elizabeth Robotics Team to Louisville, Kentucky from April 24th to April 27th, 2019 for the VEX Robotics World Championship. Second. Any discussion? I would just like to say yes, congratulations and good luck. I am very grateful that they came in tonight and gave us the demonstration of some of what the robotics program and the competition is about and just educate me a tiny bit on that. Um, and I'm so impressed. So good luck and uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Great. And then item 7D, can I have a motion please? I move that we uh, consider an action to approve the following 2018-19 administrative and athletic extracurricular personnel nominations, and we have a slate, which I, I don't believe we need to read all of them. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? I'd like to thank all of these people listed. There are many of them. It is um, mostly sports uh, related, but one um, PEPG member. Thank you to each person who is willing to do this work with students and allow them to have these extracurricular experiences that give them a, you know, another way to connect to the school. All those in favor? Great. So this does not require a vote. Um, item E, consideration of the following policies for first reading. IHBEA, English language learners. KHC, distribution of non-school materials. And FF, naming of school facilities. Hope, could you please sure. elaborate? Um, so on the first one, IHBEA, English language learners. Um, this one, it was originally called Program for Limited English Proficient Students, and um, Kathy Sankard brought to our attention certain 
sort of outdated elements of that policy, specifically the naming of it. So we're changing the name to English language learners. And then we also updated um, sort of the process wherein it's not the superintendent who's responsible, but that responsibility is being delegated to the Lao plan coordinator. So okay. the policy is updated to reflect that okay. change. Um, we're not voting on that, but mm -mm. that's what the update is. Um, Distribution of school non-school materials. This is a new policy, so we don't we don't currently have a policy to um, sort of address the requests that come in uh, with respect to things that are posted within the schools, distributed electronically, or going home in backpacks. So, as we all know, that's, there's a flood of information and, and documents of, of all different kinds. So, what this is this is a um, this is the sample policy uh, with a little bit of updates. We, we wanted to include carry home items, electronic distributions, or postings. Um, so I, it, it would be helpful if the board and community members, if you have an interest in this policy, to take a look at it and note, it should be noted what it, what it doesn't cover. So it basically has, an, has a mechanism for, these, these are the materials that may be distributed. If it's not on this list, it's within the purview of the district to, to simply say no. So. Um, that's what that is. And then the last one is uh, FF naming of school facilities. And this one also, uh, we thought on the committee that it was worthy of uh, a larger discussion and um, sort of request for input from the board and, and any, any interested parties. So this is the naming of school facilities. And what we have here is there's some notes that were in the packets, and these, this is a couple of points from sample policies that we found out in the world. Um, and our policy is very simple. It's effectively, and, and, and any request to name a school facility comes to the, the board, and the board has, you know, can make a decision on that. It doesn't provide for any of the process. It doesn't provide for an establishment of a committee. It doesn't provide any criteria for the naming. So some of the things that uh, we'd like the board, the committee would like the board to consider is um, different decision points on this 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 naming. So um, one idea is that facilities or buildings wouldn't be named after individuals at all. So just an outright designation. This isn't something that our uh, our district wants to consider. A sort of a a, a, a a gradation back from that is we'd consider naming it after individuals, but only with certain, meeting certain criteria. So someone would have to be deceased for a certain number of years to sort of eliminate um, the political aspect of, of naming. Um, and then the other things to consider are: should it be the school board alone? Should it be, uh, or should it be based on committee? So uh, I'm sure we can all sort of see the value of a committee. It gives the opportunity to bring in other community members. It gives us the opportunity to um, collect information, have, a, have workshops on the, on the ideas that are brought in. Um, but we need to decide what the committee would look like, what would the makeup of the committee be. So it's not something, um, I, we, you know, the committee didn't feel that it was something we could sort of uh, um, pull together and present. I wanted to get, garner opinions and input uh, from the community and the board. Uh, so that we can um, discuss that. The next policy meeting is on April 30th, and um, anyone who's interested, please submit ideas or attend the meeting to discuss that. Okay. When when you met, were you considering one more strongly than the other? You have some ideas, different ideas so, here. Um, not necessarily. No. This was um, this. It says there's like a short blurb where it says um, for people at home. School board believes that the naming or renaming of a school facility is a major responsibility. Before doing so, the school board will seek comments and recommendations from faculty, staff, and community at a public meeting. That's like the bare bones. That's kind of what we have right now, right. almost. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that was just sort of, you know, that's a starting point. I don't think that's sufficient. Uh, and then or, and then it goes on to this sort of an alternative approach, which is, um, creating a committee with some d details fleshed out what the committee might look like. It also includes this just outright, um, we're not naming after any individual, period. Mm -hmm. You know, for an existing facility, uh, we're not using individual names. And then it cr creates, um, it, cr it, it includes a suggestion. So we understand the, the point of wanting to name a facility after an individual. It's to honor someone's work and commitment to the district. So there are other ways to do that. Um, and by capturing that in the policy, um, 
the statement is the board encourages individuals who seek to honor or memorialize an individual um, to establish a scholarship or endowment fund. So it's just a suggestion. So to answer your question, Laura, um, these are just some ideas. So and I, I want everyone to sort of take take a look at this and consider what you think our policy should look like based on our community. Great, thank you. Does anybody have any ideas that they'd like to share on this at this point? Ideas about these or additional? About these about or, these. Other, or other ideas. That I mean, I'd like to think about it a little longer, but mm -hmm. I would be leaning more towards the committee. I like the idea of it being a collaborative effort with a lot of different individuals coming together to talk and decide. I th um, the second one, I, I understand about, you know, hey, let's just not have it named after an individual whatsoever, but that's so sort of firm, and I'm not sure if I'd take that sort of stake in the ground and say never would it be allowed to be named after an individual. I see that there's some other ways you can honor an individual, but maybe you'd like the, the, maybe you'd like the prospect of it. So the committee to me, at first read, and I read this prior to the meeting, seems to be the most desirable right now, but I'd like to hear some other thoughts. So, may I? Mm -hmm. I was um, unable to attend policy committee and be a part of the um, conversation to bring this forward, but it is something that I thought about quite a bit and, and I still feel like I want to think some more, but um, Given, given these proposals, I don't see them. So two of them kind of negate each other, but having a committee, in my mind, doesn't negate us also having a, um, having guidance around who or how we name. So um, I would be very much in favor of having an advisory committee. Um, and I think like any committee, you need to make sure that people understand the role and, and the purpose and that it is, a, a, in the end, the school board does make the final decision and then the, the committee is, is advisory. I'm very much in favor of having a committee, but that doesn't rule out us deciding that um, facilities may only be named for those that are no longer with us. That, that does not rule that out. And at the, and on the flip side, I actually, I can see quite a benefit from just deciding that we, we aren't naming buildings after people or families to, to, you know, sometimes, you know, people do great work for um, a, a community and they pass away and unfortunately, you know, news comes out of something unpleasant that now that, you know, that building is now attached with and you've gone down that road. And I think that's probably what um, the, you know, that particular kind of ban on naming buildings at all probably has something to do with. So I think it's worth considering that proposal as well. I th naming a building after or naming a room or any sort of thing, I think is a very big deal. And, um, you know, our facility will be attached to that name and whatever comes with that person, positive and negative, until that room or building is no longer there. So it, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. Anybody else? Else any thoughts? Well, I guess the best place to discuss this is in the policy meeting because there's a lot of stuff that we can discuss and go back and forth for option. But looking at the first glance, I agree with Laura that definitely there should be a committee to discuss this further because uh, the decision needs to be made because it's every scenario, every case is different. Uh, and I know we are public uh, schools, but I don't know how it works between um, universities, public universities like USM and here, um, but there are folks who donate money so their name can go on the building. Uh, I know the Wish Campus Center, the USM for as an example, or the lab, Library. So if that's ever the case here for us, who wants to, there's somebody who wants to improve the swimming pool, but they like to have a name 
on, on, on the plaque. Is that possible or not? So that comes into consideration too in the future. Thanks. Um, and I agree, I think it needs to go beyond just the seven of us on the school board to make that decision. I believe that an advisory committee is essential to get the input and have the time to discuss it. Um, and I agree, it just needs some further conversation and policy around this. So I invite input, it, you know, to me as the mm -hmm. policy committee chair, I can take input and I'll be happy to bring it to the next meeting and anyone who wants to attend the next meeting is welcome to come to be part of that discussion. Right, and that's open to the public, right? Yes. yes. Great. What time is it on the 30th? It's on April 30th at 3 p.m. Yes. In the Jordan, Jordan Conference, Conference Room. room. Great. So we used to have policy in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Moving up. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I have an action for item 7F, please? I move we approve the following policies for second reading, KHB advertising in the schools, BEDB agenda, and BEDBA agenda format. Second, anybody? So comment on what we've done here. Um, so are you second? Oh, I'm sorry, second. I, okay, sorry, thanks. But you had seconded it. <clears throat> sure, I second that. Um, so starting with advertising in schools. Um, so uh, we, um, uh, our policy was very bare bones. It was basically make a request. We may or may not approve it. Uh, didn't have a lot of guidance on um, on our ability to say yes or no. So we, we took the Maine School Management Association sample, which is a little bit more robust. Um, it has the same uh, impact. Uh, it also does have a, um, a requirement with respect to the smart snack standards. So we can't advertise for any food or beverages that are outside of that um, requirement. Um, <clears throat> And of course, we have a, um, an additional restriction, which is just makes sense to restrict any efforts um, um, uh, are to, consistent with our efforts to promote a tobacco, alcohol, and drug-free environment. We would absolutely not have any advertisements for those products on school. Mm -hmm. So that's advertising in schools. Um, the other ones are agenda and agenda format. Um, on agenda, we. Um, we fixed some typos and we um, added some uh, some requirements around the dissemination of the supporting materials. So this is around um, the requirements for the superintendent will provide the boards board with background materials as needed to be able to make our decisions at the meeting. So it just sort of adds what's already being what's already being done, but it documents it as part of the process of the agenda. Um, <coughs> And then the final one is agenda format. Again, it's we fixed some typos um, and effectively no impact on the um, the substance of it uh, as is. Yeah. Great. Any other discussion? All those in favor. Bye. Thank you for that work, Hope, and for all those on the policy committee. Um, next, we have committee reports. I think, Hope, are you all set with policy yeah. committee? <laughs> uh, tech committee. Um, the technology committee will start ramping up its work um, as the budget process, at least on the school board side, is um, wrapping up after a presentation to the town council. Um, the focus of the technology committee will really be on um, improving the website. So, you know, um, really doing our research and due diligence on the different companies that may provide us with those services and um, being able to, to bring a recommendation to the board. So stay tuned. And if you would like to be involved in technology committee, please reach out. Great. Uh, dropout committee. Yes, sir. Um, there isn't one that I'm aware of yet uh, for the dropout committee, and um, so we're hoping that 
We will meet, definitely, hopefully, my hope is to meet in these couple times before the school year ends, so that's a promise. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, and Kimberly Carr had to step away. She's, on, she's the li liaison for CEIF. Um, and I do know that, I don't want to speak for her, but I do know that she did go and attend and the format, you were there with this conversation, so if I may speak, correct me, the, the format that it is is uh, she attends the CEIF meetings and she presents from the school board to the, the members of CEIF. Other people can come in and present in the beginning and then she leaves the meeting. Um, so she really doesn't have that much to bring back to the board. Uh, it's more of her presenting from us. So she'll speak about that more next time, but just to know that she did attend um, that CEIF meeting. Uh, and then item number nine, request for future school board meeting items. Are there any? Okay, it looks like there are some upcoming meetings happening. Let's see, the school board workshop Tuesday the 23rd from 6.30 to 8.30, are we, that's on, at the high school library. Uh, school board FY20 budget presentation to the town council will be here in the town council chambers Wednesday, April 24th, 2019 from seven to nine. The council finance committee wrap up if needed will be Thursday, April 25th, 2019. So oftentimes we found that Wednesday is not enough time to have the full discussion. And so it often falls over until the next day. Uh, and then as Hope was sharing, the policy committee is Tuesday, April 30th, 2019 in the Jordan Conference Room at three o'clock. And I think that's all the meetings that we have. Can I have a motion? Please. I move we enter into executive session pursuant to one MRSA, subsection 4056A to consider administrative evaluations. I second. Um, a vote. Yes, all in favor. One, two, three, okay, thank you. So we will go into our executive session.
we are back. So welcome back. Uh, may I have a motion for item 12, please? I move that we take action following executive session to renew a two-year administrative contract for Catherine Stanford. Second. Any, do we discuss? No, we can't discuss. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, wait. Who made the motion? I Sorry. Did. You tried. <laughs> Who seconded? You. I did. All those in favor. Great. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, item number 13. I move we take action following executive session to renew a two-year administrative contract for Noel Haroff. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Great. Item 14. I move we take action following the executive session to renew a two-year administrative contract for Jeffrey Thorax. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Great. And item 15. I move we take action following executive session to renew a one-year probationary administrative contract for Delbert PV. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And item 16. I move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Discussion. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you so much. <laughs> 806.